All right, good morning and welcome to Little Life Big Loss. Today I have a beautiful mama here today. Her name is Jessie. And when she texted me to be on the potty, she was just like writing the most beautiful text messages and speaking so much love into me, which I really appreciate. I thought that was really kind. Um, she's going to be sharing her story today about her little baby, Nate. Um, and yeah, I just feel so honored to have you on here. I know it's such a sacred space and I know you're a little bit nervous as is everyone when they come on, but you're going to be amazing. And there's absolutely no right or wrong thing you can do in this space. It's just literally sharing your story. So thank you for coming on. Thanks for having me. That's all right. So we're going to get started and straight into it and um, I'll guide you along with your story. So, um, as always, I truly believe that the day our babies pass away, our our DNA changes forever and who we are changes forever. Who was Jessie before she lost her baby? Um, so I was in a new relationship, doing long distance. I am a shift worker, so I was working and just travelling a bit and, yeah, family yeah. and, yeah, just, yeah. <laughs> What kind of shift work do you do? I'm a disability support worker. So, oh, that's yeah, powerful. working and, yeah. Yeah, and doing long distance, how far away does your partner live? So he was in Canberra. Um, we had met, yep. like, July last year. Um, we had known each yep. other for a while because um, we both lived in Darwin for a few years. So we knew each other there, but never pursued anything and then his sister got married in New Zealand and yeah rekindled and yeah we started our little long distance relationship it was quite cute yeah <laughs> we're both like we don't want relationships but when we met each other again we we're just like yeah this is us so oh, yeah we we're just so going nice. back and forth and yeah it was really yeah it was a nice little start of a relationship yeah. that was for sure yeah and you know what, like long distance is hard, but I think when you are building something, it's actually quite nice. Like you hear about a lot of relationships that started during COVID and because there, there's not that physical stuff straight away, it takes that out of it. And then you're literally just getting to know each other from a, you know, personality perspective. It's just all conversation. And I, I think there's more depth to it that way. Yeah, you're so right. You are. Mm. Yeah. And every time we would end up catching up I would always say have my period so it was never it was yeah basically based on community um communication which was good it was lovely (laughs) and so then you obviously met up at one point and didn't have your period because lo and behold (laughs) yeah I had a nice surprise pregnancy (laughs) I um because I got diagnosed with polycystic ovary syndrome god I think I was maybe 22 so yeah. I didn't think I would fall so easily, but yeah, I um I did. It was a nice little shock to the system, but um yeah, yeah, we're quite over the moon. We'll yeah, we're happy and yeah, it was yeah, quite beautiful. <laughs> yeah, that's nice, and it's you know everyone takes a shock pregnancy differently, and um that's so nice that it brought you guys together, and you know that you were excited for it. Yeah, it was exciting. And so were you living near each other by this stage or had you decided to move together or? No, we didn't even talk about that. So we're thinking like we're going to move together. He was going to come to the Central Coast, um, say Christmas time and move here. But, um, yeah, I think when I fell pregnant it just made it move a bit quicker. So he ended up Mm -hmm. moving here in um, February. So, yeah, that was, yeah, it was nice. We found out I was pregnant last year sorry yeah um yeah we found out we're pregnant um the 5th of november we went to like a family reunion and i was like to my sister oh i haven't had my periods for a while but like that was kind of normal for me as well i didn't really Mm. keep track and yeah and it was funny i feel really weird saying this but we're sitting around having a few drinks and then hannah's like let's just take a pregnancy test and i was like i'm not pregnant but let's do it and then, yeah, I went into the bathroom and I took it and it said three plus weeks and I just, like, burst it into tears. I was like, what? Mm. Like, I feel so guilty because I was drinking. I was like, okay, yeah. wait. 
I was trying yeah. to get Pat's attention because he was a meeting family. So I'm like, it felt like an hour. I was like, come on, let's go talk for a minute. And yeah, I told him and we just both hugged and we we're just like, oh my God. And yeah, the next mm. day I woke up, I was so sick and I was like, yep, yeah, I'm definitely right. pregnant. <laughs> yeah. How did I not yeah. know this before? <laughs> yeah. It just hits oh, you, right? I don't even know. Yeah, I was like, I don't even understand how I didn't even realise. <laughs> yeah. No. And it's so hard to not feel that guilt. I actually had that conversation with my sister over the weekend and a friend of mine, oh, my auntie, I think, and um, because just before we conceived Millie, we had three weddings and we were drinking and all the rest of it. And that was just conceiving. I mean, because we were trying so hard, I knew from when I would have conceived to not drink. But we yeah. did conceive her then and... Um, now finding out that her illness wasn't genetic and it was from conception, the head fuck it's that. been for me. And like, of course, all my family, like, you can't think, you know, not that you can't think that, but it's, it's not the, you know, blah, blah, blah. But it's so hard to not feel guilty. Right. Oh, you're so right. It's, yeah. Mm. It's, oh, yeah. You know, it's, mm. The guilt we hold is empty. <laughs> I know your head just goes into a thousand different spirals constantly it does and it's like quite frustrating Mm. that's why I love this podcast because it just makes you not feel crazy it's like you can relate to every single person that comes on here and it's like wow we're all the same we're not crazy and I think it's beautiful Mm. that yeah everyone's sharing this so glad so glad (laughs) you found the potty (laughs) how did you find the podcast was it through spotify or instagram no so i actually deleted because a lot of people were due around the same time as me and it was a bit triggering Mm. and um i actually deleted all social media but i would be on spotify and i'd listen to a lot of say american podcasts and i couldn't really relate to them because yeah i was just like oh but my mum actually works with a friend of yours and she was like oh and told mum the story and I was like <gasps> oh my god and I the first time I ever met Brooke I was like I, I cried I was like thank you so much for like recommending this podcast it's helped me heal so much and I like thank you so much for that so yeah it was oh, just word of mouth so that was great I love that and then a few other people I've had another two people tell me and I was like yeah I listen to it all the time and they're like oh that's good <laughs> Oh, I love yeah. that. I was from the Central Coast, so I know like a fair few people down there, but it's so nice that everyone's talking about it. it yeah, it's beautiful. No, you're doing a good job. <laughs> oh, thank you. So you found out you're pregnant. It was November 5th um, and you were yeah. about three weeks. Yeah. And so then what happened? You started so, going to appointments. You guys got excited. Yeah. Well, on the test, it said three plus weeks. I was like, oh, okay. And then I stayed in Canberra for a little bit just to get my head around things. Then I drove home and booked in with the doctor, had the bloods, and then yep, came back. I was pregnant. So I had an ultrasound and I brought mum with me. And um, it turned out I was actually seven weeks pregnant. I was like, shit, like I've been pregnant for seven weeks. And that's what threw me because mm. I'm like, that seven weeks, I wasn't healthy. I didn't know. So mm. I was like, poor, the poor baby. But yeah, and mm. when I seen the heard the heart um, beat, I was like, oh, my God, I do. I have a little baby in my belly and mm. I FaceTimed Pat and I was like, we're going to be parents on the 26th of June. Like, how exciting. And, yeah. yeah, but then the anxiety started. I just felt really uneased about it all and I was like, I just need to get to the 12-week scan so I know that yeah. everything's fine. Um, and I kind of delayed that scan because Pat was in Canberra and he was coming here. So I got that scan around, say, the 14-week mark and it was yeah. just before Christmas. So it was like the 23rd of December and I was like, perfect. So, And you know how they can't give anything away to you. So she was doing it and I was like, oh, it seems fine. So then that just lifted my anxiety a little bit and I had a good Chrissy and then we booked in to get the results for the Harmony test and then the results for that ultrasound and um the doctor just said to me your baby has a hole in its belly and I was like what and I just like burst into tears because I had no Mm. idea what he was talking about and he couldn't really relay anything to us I was like okay and being that time like between Chrissy and New Year's it's like we couldn't get in anywhere to like get any answers so he sent, um, we had a whole heap of paperwork and we didn't want to know the sex of the bub. Like I was like, I don't want to know the sex. And he gave us the paperwork. And I said to my partner, Pat, I was like, 
don't read through that because you, the sex is in there. And as I've said that, yeah. he's read the sex and he's like, shit, <sighs> I know the sex. I was like, well, don't tell me. So God love him. He kept it to himself the whole pregnancy. And he painted this uh, wall in the nursery. Yeah. And funny, I still thought, I didn't know what it was, but now I look at it, I'm like, yeah, it was definitely a boy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> It's so like, yeah. yeah, everyone's like, you're having a boy. I'm like, I don't know. Oh, that's <laughs> but, so um, funny. Yeah, so then we had a lot of paperwork sent to, say, John Hunter, and I was calling them to be like, what's happening? And they're like, sorry, we actually can't take your case. You're going to have to go somewhere else. And I was like, because I live in Lake, um, Lake Memora, so I'm like Gosford and... Um, John Hunter are much the same distance. I was like, I don't sure. understand how you can reject something. But anyway, um, so it was such a long wait. And in between that, we actually had a midwife appointment, which was beautiful because we got to hear the heartbeat again and go through mm. things. And she just explained, like, this could be it, but we don't know. And I was just praying. I was like, please just let this just be a mistake in the ultrasound mm. that the baby's fine. And we ended up, I think it was around 18 I was about 18 weeks. We ended up going to um, Royal North Shore and we had a okay. uh, head-to-toe ultrasound. And um, yeah. then they confirmed the findings. They were like, so Nate had a condition called gastrocesis, which means like his bowel is on the outside of his belly. It just a little hole there. It just didn't close over. Um and I was like, oh, I've never heard of this. But it's funny mm. when you find something out and then you talk to people and they're like, oh, my brother had that or, like, my third baby had that. And I'm like, oh, okay. So it was very common. They okay. don't actually take babies with that um, condition. Um, so they don't specialise in it. So they recommended two different hospitals for us. And um, I said, whatever you recommend the most, we'll do that. So we ended up going to, um, I call it Ramwick, but what's it called? Um Anyway, Royal Ramwick, Children's, Royal Women's Hospital um, or something? Or, no? That's it. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. we ended up going there, which was, so that's about a two-hour drive from our house. And um, we went there and we had a beautiful midwife and um, she just explained, like, what can happen with gastrocesis babies because every baby's different. Um, you have to be prepared for having a stillbirth and mm. um, you they babies with gastrocesis they want to have them around say the 36 week mark they don't want them too big but they are born in a smaller size and I was like okay mm -hmm. and they said a lot of people do terminate at pregnancies and I said look fine. if he's healthy I was like and if it's just his bowel I was like it's mm -hmm. fine I was like if there's anything else then maybe but I was like no like it's so fine we're happy to go ahead with it mm -hmm. so it turned out that we um we had ultrasounds every four weeks so got to see Nate every four weeks which was great and um I remember one ultrasound he was actually playing with his bowel and I was like oh my god and it, it I was like I can't wait to tell you that at your 18th birthday yeah. that you were born in my belly you were playing yeah. with your bowel and it was funny I was like yeah but that gave me a lot of anxiety because I'm like are you pulling it out more I was like yeah. stop playing with it leave it alone <laughs> but uh, yeah so it was funny. yeah yeah oh, so then they, um, oh he was so yeah it was it was yeah a hectic pregnancy and I think because I was doing shift work too and then going to Ramwick every four weeks and then I ended up getting diagnosed with gestational diabetes at like mm. towards the end of my pregnancy and I was like oh here we go but mm. I'll go to um I went to Gosford I think a few times I don't I don't know why I think it was for the diabetes to have meetings and because I was quite small um, and I had a doctor and, say, a trainee, they were in there feeling my belly and they're like, look, we want you to come in once a week so we can put you on that um, machine just to check your baby's movements. And I was like, yeah. God, I'm going to Ramwick and then I have to come here. And I was like, this is hectic. But I called my midwife and because the ultrasounds that I did get they were very intense so it was like they can see everything and it was every four mm. weeks so she's like you don't have to worry about doing that and I was like okay perfect so we didn't, yeah. didn't end up doing that which was great so then he was always breached so I was thinking I didn't they said it needed either a c-section natural birth or you're getting juice and I was like I don't does it matter how he gets here yeah. as long as he's here 
And a lot of people during my pregnancy would say to me, oh, how would you give a natural birth? Like when his bowel and stuff gets stuck. And I was like, I don't know. And I was like, don't say that to me. My anxiety is through the roof. And like, anyway, people's comments are funny. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Um, (laughs) Um, yeah, so I forget what I was as saying. It, as, if you, as if you already hadn't thought of all of that, you know, like you would have asked all those questions like, can I safely have a vaginal birth? You know, what is going to be best for baby? And I, I love that you just said that, you know, whatever gets him here safely because I think sometimes um, society tells us that we have to have births a certain way and, you know, I just think my personal opinion is always whatever gets baby here safely. I agree because, yeah, 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 I agree with that. So we're yeah. going to get um, into... And so when you... Sorry, I'll just si- interrupt for a second. So, when you said that you had heard of people, like everyone was saying, oh, yeah, my brother had that or whatever, whatever, those people survived? And so yeah. they... Yeah, okay. So you had a hope that this could be fixed or not fatal, right? Yeah, well, our OB, which I'm her bedside manner was absolutely shocking I'm really cranky with her and uh yeah anyway that's a I'll tell a story about her later but um mm-hmm. she um would she said to me oh this is such an easy case you've got nothing to worry about and those just that has stuck with me so much because I'm like why did you get my hopes up you shouldn't have said anything mm. even if you believed that like because mm. I was but then people would say to me, it's like I just had this feeling that it wasn't forever. And it, I don't, I can't even explain it, but people would say to me, oh, your baby's going to be here soon. And I would be like, hopefully. And it's just like, I think because I was preparing for a stillbirth, mm. which really I was not prepared, but like, yeah, I was just like, I don't think it's forever. And it's, yeah, it turns out my gut was right. So <laughs> have you but, heard um, that in yeah. pretty much every podcast I've done so far is that everybody who has experienced this has said the exact same thing. We have it's this crazy. Thing, and I had it with Millie. It's this innate feeling that you just can't imagine bringing them home. And then there's the guilt. I feel guilty that I couldn't imagine bringing my baby home, but I couldn't. I ha- and I didn't even know yeah. she was unwell until birth. But it was like, and I'm finding every fucking podcast I do that mother's instinct is like, I just never, yeah, it's wild. It's, it actually blows it my is mind. It's wild. Just said that. Every time when people do say it on your podcast, I'm like, oh, my God, isn't that just crazy? Mm. Oh, it's just insane. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. And so she was reassuring you that everything was going to be fine. However, you did have one midwife tell you that to prepare you for a stillbirth, which which I actually think is better to prepare you than not. And, yeah. Yeah. You're right. Yeah, Judy, mm. like my midwife, I love her. She's just the best. And she, I love how upfront she was and she was just mm-hmm. honest and she was yeah. like there was no beating around the bush and I was thankful for that. Yeah. But, um, yeah, the OB, I really hope that I think she's just been in the industry for too long and she's part of the furniture in a sense. And I said to Pat, I was like, if I got like that in my work, I said I'll leave because it's unfair yes. for clients to yeah. – like I think, yeah. But anyway, that's just must be her personality. But that's okay. I, um, no emotional intelligence. Yeah. No, and like Pat, one time was standing up recording, like the um, taking a video of the um, TV, and she's like, "Sit down." And I was like, but she would walk in and just walk straight past stuff and say, "Hope everything's good," and then just on the computer and be like, "Yeah, everything's all good. See you in four weeks." And there was just no like. How's it going? Like, where's your, like, mm. sympathy for, like, I don't know. She mm. had no care. I don't know. And me being, That's like, awful. a caring person, I was like, God, I wish I didn't have you. <laughs> mm. But anyway, that was yeah. Right. But they, um, yeah, so we had <clears throat> our last little ultrasound and then they said, we'll see you. We'll be getting induced on the 6th. But in that ultrasound, because he was breached the whole time, he was actually engaged. And I was like, oh, my God. I was like, I could potentially have a natural birth and I was like this is exciting but I, as again it didn't bother me either way um so then I finished work on Mother's Day and I remember walking out of work going oh my god I'm finished like this time next year I'm gonna actually be celebrating Mother's Day and it was just like exciting and mm. yeah it was yeah so I left there and I had a, <sighs> probably not even <laughs> a few days off and I took my um my nephew to clip and climb with Pat and I just felt different I was like 
I haven't felt the baby move for a bit. I was like, I just feel a little bit weird. So we dropped my um, nephew back off and went to Gosford Hospital on the Monday. And um, they put me on the CTG machine and I was there for about, say, two and a bit hours. But during my whole pregnancy, I actually suffered from restless legs and it was shocking. I, ha- mm. I couldn't sleep. Like I had to have showers all the time. I was like, what is this? Mm-hmm. So um, laying there for that two and a half hours was torture because I couldn't move and I was like, my legs are going crazy. <laughs> but um, yeah. when I was there, they, they were like to me, oh, you're going through Braxton Hicks. And I was like, yeah, I can actually start to feel that. So I was like, okay. And um, so then they're like, okay, go home. So we got home around, say, four-ish, five-ish in the afternoon and then, like, these Braxton Hicks really, like, just started a bit, but it kind of just reminded me of, like, a cyst on my ovaries, like, similar pain mm-hmm. to that. So I was like, oh, this is okay. And I called my midwife, Judy, just to tell her how it all went at the hospital. And she's like, that's good and blah, blah, blah. And this is where I really replay everything that maybe something could have been different um, because I just feel like I was so naive with my mm. labour, I guess. I just thought, oh, it's just Braxton Hicks, whatever. So... I remember like going in now the shower and it was like four in the morning and I made a sound and Pat's like, no, nah, let's get in the car, let's go. Um, you need to get checked up. You've never made that sound before. I was like, I'm fine. It's just Braxton Hicks. Like, let's not worry. But we ended up driving and I called Goss for hospital and I was telling them what was happening. And they said, look, it's just Braxton Hicks. Just go home and get um, put a hot water bottle on and just relax. So I was like, okay, being a first time mum, I just went home. But What I really wish I did then was just call my midwife, Judy, because she would have been like, come to Ramwick. But I just didn't because I was like, I don't know, I just didn't. I really regret that. But Mm. anyway, I think, yeah, it's that's, yeah. But um, so we we got home and it started throughout that day and I was getting a bit worse. But as again, it just reminded me of my polycystic. So I was like, this is fine, like whatever. And then because we've divided the house. So we're in the front of the house and my mum's in the back of the house. So she come home from work and I was naked and I was just standing in the house like swaying a bit and she's like, you need to go to the hospital. And I was like, I'm all right. And she goes, no, call Judy. So we called Judy and she's like, go to the hospital. So we made our way to the hospital at about four again. So it's like four. <laughs> um, and we got there and I remember from the car park to where we had to go, I had to stop like three times. And I and this lady's like, I'll get you a wheelchair. I was like, I cannot sit down. Like the, that drive from my house to Gosford was torture. So we stood and we walked there and we got sent in and I had to, yeah, they'd done all the checks. And I remember this nurse or midwife came in and she was like, you should have kept driving to Ramwick. And I just wanted to punch her. I was like, how dare you say that to me? Like, I don't know. I called you guys and you were like, it's Braxton Hicks. So anyway, Fuck, um, that's awful. and it turned out I was actually, I, oh, I was actually eight centimetres dilated. So Fuck. they're like, yeah, they're like, in you go. And because like the plan was with Nate, so <clears throat> he was going to, I was going to deliver him and then they would show me him. I wouldn't have that first touch, but they would show me him and then they will put him on the bed and then they would wrap his arm bowel up and then, there we go, we'll just take him and that's how they're going to do the care. So I just cried and I was like, he's meant to have surgery, like he shouldn't be here, like we have a plan. Like, But anyway, I had to calm and I was like, this is what we're doing. So we got into the room and... And how um, many weeks were yeah, you at like this point? Pushes. Um, I was 35.1 days. Hmm. So he went, yeah, I, I was meant to get induced the following Tuesday yeah. So he did come early and, and he was actually under weight because he was only like, what was he, 20, point, 20, 20 30 grams. So he's like two kilos. Oh, he was so tiny. Little papa. <laughs> um, yeah. Oh, he was so, but it reminded me like because I delivered him and it just reminded me of say like love child because I like delivered him and then he was just gone. And I was mm. like, I heard him but I was like what did I have and mum's like you had a boy and I was like oh my god I had a little boy like that's so exciting and yeah and then he was just gone and I was like okay shower me let's go like I want to go and see him so I had a shower and just walked up there and there he was laying there with he was just so alert like Mm. you wouldn't have thought he was born at 35 weeks like he was just looking around he had so much hair and when I looked at him, I'm like, it's like you've been here before, like your little old soul. Like he was just mm. oh, so perfect. And 
Mm. He was sucking on Pat's finger and Pat was like, he's got such a good grip and he was just, yeah, I think he was really hungry. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it was just, it was, I was just in so much shock. I was like, oh my God. And I kept touching my belly, like, where is he? But he was on the table and I'm like, this is crazy. No. Well, it happened <laughs> like, so quickly yeah. for you. Like, I mean, it happened, it took a, like a, well, so was it 12 hours that you were labouring at home or 24 hours or yeah. 12? About, Yeah. It's, and then oh, you got I in there really and just two pushes and he was out. Oh, crazy. I just couldn't believe it. And I, I thank Nate for that because I, I'm thankful that I did get that natural birth. But, mm. I, yeah, the, but it didn't bother me anyway. But it was just they don't know why he did come early. And I think maybe he did come early just to meet us. Otherwise I do mm. feel like he might have passed to Like I might have had a stillbirth. So I am thankful for the ex- experience we did have. But mm. it's just shit that how it all turned out <laughs> yeah yeah so you went up and you saw him in they had him in NICU at this point no so they just had him upstairs in like a little room and he wasn't in the incubator yet he was just on like I forget what they call the little bed there but um mm. it the panda or whatever but there he was just on that so then the um team that transfers like little bubs they came and they took him, so they drove him to Ramwick and Pat and I just followed. Right. Okay. Um, I didn't – they did offer me to go in the car, but I was like, no, 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 it's all right, I'll go with Pat, I'll, we'll just meet him there. And I wish I went in the car because I'm like, oh, I just should have been with him. Like he had mm. – he was with strangers and mm. anyway, that's – yeah, that's that's okay. <laughs> so yeah. I think we got to Ramwick at like – three o'clock that like the next day in the morning and Nate was in his little incubator and he just looked so like perfect just laying there and looking around and he was yeah he was just a little cutie so they fixed his bag up and yeah he was on all of his like meds and all the tubes were in and, so he had yeah, a bag was, yeah so they, like a yeah, when like you, a silo yeah. bag. So it was mm. so it was like what they do is they put in this bag and they hold it up so then slowly it will just slowly get pushed down and that's what was happening. So they had like a little pick on it and fluid would come along up on the pick and then they would just push the bow down and it was just a okay. slow thing that they were doing. Yeah, so yeah. but I rem- remember when we got there and I looked at the – because it is a bit confronting. It's like, oh, wow, and – as they said, like every gastrocesis baby is just different. So like I seen like when we got there at three, like the colour of the bag and I was like, oh, yeah, it kind of was like a light hydration wee colour in a sense. And I was yeah. like, okay. And then Pat and I went to, um, so they had two rooms there. So we got to sleep like just, yeah, in the ward but just in a room. So I didn't really sleep because I was so excited. I'm looking through photos of Nate and I'm like, oh, my God. And yeah. yeah, and they had to call me to give consent for medication and, yeah, so then that morning when I went back in there, I just noticed, like, the colour of the bag. It was just a little bit darker and I was like, oh. And I remember the second day I was like, is that, like, normal? Like, because it just kept getting darker and darker. Mm. And they're like, look, it's, yeah, it's fine. Like, this is just gastrocesis. And I was like, okay, and... So we um there was a charity and I'm so spewing I don't remember the name of it but they um we were like probably 300 meters from the hospital so we're staying in accommodation that was yeah okay. like a charity ran accommodation which was great so I really struggled with that separation and at this point I still hadn't had my first hold so I think it was day mm. three day three or four where I got to have that first kind of skin on skin but it's not really because yeah you know you know like it's yeah. We All had that with Minnie. She was, was like, yeah, she was still in like the nest, and I had my clothes on, yeah. and she was in it. Yeah, it's 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 a hold, but it's not skin it's, to skin. No, yeah, and it was like, oh yeah, this is like I get to hold him, but yeah, and then I remember um, the night because we'd say goodbye because I had a social worker, and I said to her, I'm struggling with this separation, like I'm not sleeping, I just want to mm. be with him all the time, and. She's like, look, when you're with him, he can smell, he can hear you, and that means he's alert, so you need him to rest and you need to rest, so you need to go and do things to keep him busy and come back and see him and et cetera. So she calmed me a bit and I was like, okay, but we went and said goodnight to him one night and there was a new nurse on because he usually just had the same nurse, nurses and I was like, oh, yeah, this is a new lady and 
when I looked at him, I looked at his bag because it started to, it was a very dark colour at this point, like a reddy, tingy colour. And I was like, <laughs> far out, that's changed so quickly in such a short amount of time. And I just couldn't sleep and I had to, because I was pumping every four hours, so I, like, I was mm. pumping about 4 a.m. and I was like, I might go over and, like, I want to go and see him, but because we were struggling with sleep, I was like, I'm not going to wake Pat up to go and walk over and see him and it's 4 in the morning, like, I don't want to walk by myself. So um, <clears throat> we, we, I was on the phone to my dad that morning and then I hung up and I had three missed calls and I was like, shit. So I called him back and, yeah, it was the doctor there and they're like, we need to take Nate into surgery just to check in his bowel and just to see what's happening. Mm. And I just knew, I was like, this isn't going to be good. I just knew and it was a Saturday Mm. and I was like, shit. So Pat and I tried to keep busy for the few hours he was in surgery and I hated that I didn't get to give him a kiss, like, good luck or Mm. anything. And I was like, shit, like, I hope he comes out and it's okay. And, yeah, and then we get the phone call and, his nurse, God, she was just so beautiful. I could tell in her voice when she said to me, you need to come in for the meeting, and I could just tell. And when she see me, mm. I could just read her emotion, and I was like, yeah, this isn't good. So Pat and I were waiting for them to come in to speak to us, and I just said to Pat, if this isn't good, I said I, I would love for him to be an organ donor. Mm. I would, um, mm. I like, I want, if it, like, I just want happiness around him blah, 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 so then, then they all, like, God, so many of them come in and then I see my social worker and I was like, yep, yeah, this isn't good. So she sat mm. right on me and she was rubbing my leg and I was like, fuck. Oh. And then they said that, <clears throat> um, so Nate had a complex um, gastrocesis, um, but there was also, like, say up above, like, where your bowel starts, it was actually completely dead. So they were, it's, they were like, there's nothing they can do mm. um, because it was completely dead. And they were in shock that he was passing all the checks. That's why they didn't take him into surgery because he was passing all those checks. And they're like, yeah, it was just the colour of the bag that alerted them, I guess. Mm. Um, and then we were just like, shit, so what happens now? And um, they were like, we can take him back into surgery to like 100% confirm And I was like, I don't want that. I was like, I'm not letting him go back under for Mm. you to tell me the exact same thing. I was like, I don't want him to, like, we could lose him, like, in there. And I was like, I don't want that. Well, we both didn't want that. So um, they said what would happen is, like, family would come in and um, they would just slowly take him off all the cords. And he was because of surgery on a breathing tube, but he wasn't relying on that. But because he was in surgery, they did just keep it in. Um, and they would, so over time, they were just slowly taking it all out and, <clears throat> sorry. Um, yeah. Yeah, they slowly took it all out and then they were just saying that the pain relief will stay in so he won't be, he'll, he won't be in pain, which was great. Mm. Um, they said, so essentially it was kind of like palliative care in a way that they were like he could last a minute, a day, a week, there's just, like, the unknown. And I was like, Mm. okay. And so it was like I had a proper hold because they ended up just bandaging his back, like his bowel, Mm. and so we could he was off everything. He just had his little pain relief in his feet. And um, we're holding him and I ended up held him for a while and they actually had a sleep together and he still had the breathing tube in at this point. So it was about 2 a.m., I don't know what date now, but, yeah, 2 a.m. and we're like, let's take the breathing tube out. And I started to freak. I was like, oh, my God, I hope Mm. that he doesn't take his last breath straight away. Um, Mm. And he didn't. He was, like, (laughs) looking around and then we dressed him. But Nate was so long. Like, his arms were, like, 20.7 centimetres long. Like, he was such a long (sighs) bum. And, like, I was trying to dress him and I just couldn't get his arms in. I was freaking out. And Pat's like, calm, it's okay. And I was like, I don't want him to take his last breath here. Like, Mm. so we ended up dressing him and took him into the room and it was just us. But it was... It was a bit hard because, like, we were in the ward, but so there's stages in there. So it's, like, where Nate was and then there's a second stage where they're getting a little bit better and then the third stage is kind of like the nursery. They're getting ready to go home. And Mm. there was, so there's two rooms. So in the other room there was a family with their baby that they were ready to take home. So we could hear that baby 
crying and then you can also hear the nurseries all them babies crying and I was like this is hectic so we just we had Nate there and I remember just putting him because all I wanted was him to like same with what you did with Millie like I got to feed him with the cotton tip but it's like I just wanted that feeling on my boob and I was like so I remember having him on my boob and I was like putting my nipple in his little mouth and I'm like squeezing a little bit of milk in there and the nurse come in and I freaked I was like oh um, and, sh- and I shouldn't have freaked because, like, he's my baby. I shouldn't have been, like, oh, having to explain yeah. what I'm doing with him. But she's like, look, like, it's beautiful, but you know he won't suck. And I was like, I get that. I so get that. Like, but, yeah, so it was, yeah, so we're just watching, um, like, Nate go through the waves of, yeah, it was like I would never wish, the, like, anyone to watch their kid do that. But, yeah. We, like, we were holding him, Pat and Nate had a good little sleep together and I was just staring at him and I was like, this is hectic, like, and it was like 5 a.m. and I was like to Pat, fuck this, like, let's just get, because they offered a pram and they're like, let's just, I was like, let's just get a pram and let's go watch the sunrise and let's just, like, Aww. get out of this hospital. And so the lady come in and she goes, look, if you want to take him out of the hospital grounds, we actually have to get a letter just in case he does pass away outside and someone pulls me up and he's like, that baby's dead, what are you doing? And I was like, that's hectic. So yeah. I know, I was like, that's that's insane. So I was like, no, we don't want a letter. We'll just walk around to like the hospital grounds. And because yeah. he would, he would go through the colour emotions. So he would, in the room, he would turn blue and then uh-huh. he would gas for his air and then Pat yeah. and I would say goodbye to him and then he would just oh, come good fuck. again. We're like, uh-huh. fucking hell, man. Like, what is happening? So <laughs> I was Legit. like, but we took him, as soon as we took him out of those hospital grounds, he just lit up. And he, like, Nate was just, like, looking around and I was like, oh, look at this, you get some fresh air and, like, yeah. we're showing him, like, different sounds and, like, the sky and just talking to him. And we sat in the courtyard and Pat was like to me, I'm going to go get some coffee and food. Like, you stay with Nate and then, yeah, we'll go. Because his pain relief, like, was in the pram too. So, okay. and then as soon as Pat left me, it started beeping and I just freaked out. I was like, what the fuck is happening? And I'm like calling Pat like it's beeping. I don't know what's happening. And I thought they were going to run out of battery. So I was like, shit. But then they're like, no, 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 it's fine. It's got a lot of charge on it, but it just beeps to let you know that you need to put it on charge. I was like, fire right. out. So, yeah. So we went we went back up to the room and then that's when like the social worker and the doctors and all that come around and Again, we were watching Nate go through his waves multiple times. And I remember the doctor come in and I said to them, like, this is so cruel. Like, what the fuck's happening? Like, no one should witness this. And they're like, Jesse, like, we did explain this to you. This is what it was. And I was like, this is fucked. And then, well, as I said, listening to babies cry. And I was yeah, just that's like, oh. And, mm-hmm. oh. and then my midwife was like, okay, so do you, do you want to move out of this room? I said, I would love that. And she goes, look, there's labour rooms up there. She goes, but be prepared. You might hear someone in labour. And I was the like, fuck? look, I don't care. I would rather hear someone scream than I would rather hear a baby. Like I, I just, <clears> it was too hard. So mm. we ended up moving. And these labour rooms were beautiful. I was like, oh, my God, I wish I had to live in here. I like that. It was just incredible. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so we ended up moving there. And then, yeah, we just kept going in and out of, like, the hospital, taking him for walks and whatever. <clears> and, yeah, saying goodbye to him like so many times. And I remember being outside and I was like, tonight you can go, like, go be with your angels. Mm. Like, you're at peace, you're so fine. And, like, it was just such mm. a, yeah, it was just repeating. And we had people come and visit us and they were, they wanted us to take to the, take us to, I forget the house now, but, um, it's like a palliative care house or something where you're caring for your children. And uh, Pat and I were like, look, because we just knew that that was his last day. We just could see it. Yeah. And we're like, look, he's here tomorrow. Then, yeah, we can go to Manly, like, whatever, but we'll just see what tomorrow brings. And anyway, um, the OB came. Oh, I just, and, like, we just wanted positivity around Nate, but she walked in and she was just crying her eyes out and I was like, I don't know why you have come up here right now. I didn't say that to her, but I just stared at her and I was like, 
she's like sorry about like you're like sorry you have to go through this and I was like yep yeah. like I think she got the picture to be like can you just go away because I'm gonna lose it at y'all um but yeah so then so she came in the OB so the the OB that was doing your scans and saying everything was fine came in when he was passing away and she was crying yeah she was crying and just staring at him like I'd like in shock and I just I wish in that moment I said oh yeah it's fine isn't it like but I just didn't I just was like don't get angry Jesse like Nate doesn't need to feel your anger right now just, yeah that's beautiful just wait yeah so they left and then he was Nate was so cheeky because he had all blonde um nurses and he had this one nurse that she was mainly on him overnight and she was coming back onto night shift and <laughs> He, she spoke and Nate just looked up at her and then closed his eyes and I was like, look at you, you little flirt, flirting with all the nurses. <laughs> it was so cheeky. Mm. And then Pat and I were looking at him and we're like, yeah, I think that, like, not long to go, like, and we'd listen mm. to his heart and we could hear it slowing down and so we took him back outside the hospital. We rugged him up because it was cold and, we're just like, no, nah, I don't want him to pass away in this hospital. Like he's, yeah, he's been through it all. So I was like, let's take him out again. So we took him down to this park and because um, we ended up getting that letter so we could leave the hospital. So we ended up going to get dinner and we watched the sunset and then we went back and ate our dinner and then ended up taking him back out again. And we, like Pat got some Captain Morgan and sounds bad but I was like I need a drink so then we had Mm -hmm. we're sitting at the park having just a sip of Captain Morgan just on Nate's behalf and Pat Mm. did put a little bit on Nate's little lips and Nate sucked that he was like "Mm." he got a little bit of Captain Morgan before he left (laughs) Um, but he um oh and we're at a park and this slide was so big and Pat and I were trying to work out how we could take him down the slide with his machines and all this but we didn't end up Mm. doing that so we're just holding him and yeah, he um, yeah, he took his last breath at about say eight oh six on the 29th of um, mm. May, under the moon but under the stars, and it was just such a shock. It was like shit, and we just listened to music and slowly made our way back up to the hospital. Mm. It was just like, what the fuck has just happened? Like, mm. it was just so insane to not to yeah. have to, I don't know, to witness all that and to watch him decline. I guess. <sighs> in colour and yeah. and the time that we ended up getting back up to the hospital, his colour completely changed, but he looked so at peace and his little eye was still open <laughs> when he no. did go. I was like, what you mean, Nate? <laughs> it was just, yeah, and it was just, yeah, crazy. <laughs> Such a wild <laughs> whirlwind and you just, it's it's something that you can never be prepared for like you just but like it's weird that we keep saying all us mum's saying like we had this innate feeling but you're still not prepared for it but I think we're somewhat prepared in terms of we get through it and you wonder how the fuck did I just get through that but then you're in shock for a while yeah. longer it feels surreal you like spend the next couple of months thinking that didn't just happen like surely that didn't happen and then reality yeah, hits like, and it's sure. like that did fucking happen like it's oh. yeah I mean and you're you're just insane a while ahead of me so if this happened so he was born may 20 uh tell me again the 23rd dates. 23rd of may 22 and he passed away 29th of may 22 no sorry this may so um i found out i was pregnant in like year oh, 22, 22. Oh, had, this was even more but, awesome. yeah so it hit six months just the other day and that hit me hard I was like how the fuck has it been six months I was like because I just think about the milestones that he should have been achieving I was like to Pat we could be actually trying food with him now and I was like that's half the reason why I did delete social media because I just can't it's like Mm -hmm. babies and stuff really trigger me I just can't be around him it's just and I feel so horrible as a person because I love people and I love but I just physically can't I just I'm protecting me at the moment and I feel selfish for that, but it's something I have to do. It's something you have to do and it's what, like, I think, so if you haven't been on social media, you you won't have seen, but I have just my normal personal Instagram and it's gone viral in the last few weeks. But with that has come these awful trolls. And so I'm getting all these people write these 
awful things like go grieve in private you're a sicko like <sighs> you you deserve a dead baby you're disgusting <gasps> like awful things but i oh am my the kind God. yeah but i'm the kind of person that needs to share i need to talk i need to do all these things where some people do want to do that in private i'm i'm different but i know that from me sharing is helping other people not feel so alone and not feel those things but you have to do what's right for you and your mental health in that space like i have You're a friend so who right. hasn't I been i can't on... believe that oh it's but you know what honestly people keep checking in on me are you okay i'm like i'm so fine because the shit they're writing is so awful about such an awful thing you know i've lost my baby you wouldn't wish it on your worst enemy uh, people writing that shit can't be fucking mentally there okay <laughs> it, it no, doesn't they're offend not okay. me you know they're not okay <laughs> no, well, and that's good. yeah no i'm not upset about it i did ha i did bite back at one lady the other day because i was like Grr. she got me like she asked me to she told me to cover up because i had a, a gown on and was about to have my first skin to skin with millie and she told me to have her up and have cover up and have some dignity and i yeah oh my god if you ever need a good that's bite so back horrible. jump on this instagram yeah, I'll be like, oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. insane. Some yeah. people, it's just like, oh, like, yeah, yeah, that, yeah. You don't deserve that. <laughs> but I'm there to, you know, like I love sharing Millie and I love sharing our experience and I love, you know, people are allowed to share their living children, so why can't I share my child that's not living, you know? And I did get that's, to have six beautiful days exactly with her, right. and yeah, but. Do what's best for you for your mental health, and if and if seeing babies on social media and stuff is is triggering for you, then for sure don't be on there, you know. And you just have to do. And some yeah. days you'll feel good about it, and some days you won't. And yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah. I just and I because I'm someone that likes to help people. I love to be there for people and give them advice and all that and I've really that's what I said to Pat the other day I said I'm struggling with the change that I'm going through and then some people say oh you're so different and it's like shut the fuck up like I am different yeah. you go through what I'm going through and then you tell me how you're gonna be like and then a lot of people have dropped off because I won't answer their phone calls and it's like mm -hmm. I'll message them and say not up for a chat yet but it's just like I've really noticed like who's there and who's not and like it's just yeah, but I'm just glad I've got Pat because he's such a beautiful, we're such a good team. And mm. to only be together just over a year and to what we've gone through, it's it could have broke us so easy, but it's just made us so much stronger. And, yeah, we've gone through yeah. some crazy ways, but we've got, mm. we've got there. I was like, we've done it. Like, it's, we're not at the mm. year yet, but I know that we're, we're going to be fine. Um, yeah. But, yeah, it's just... <laughs> yeah it does it puts so much pressure on our relationship like we dylan and i've been together almost five years and they always say the first year of marriage is the hardest and then people say you know first year with a baby is hard and i'm like try first year of marriage plus baby loss like, fuck that's a whole other element of struggles on a relationship like it's challenging and dylan <sighs> is a beautiful guy um but you know he's Dylan's like ADHD, literally just recently diagnosed, which is beautiful. It made me feel very validated. <laughs> you know, so he's a lot of personality and I'm very, yeah. I pull back a lot. And so it's like I'm trying to retreat and he's trying to, and so it just puts, it's so hard. Relationships are hard in general. I mean, can be. And then you add in all of these things that we've got to go through. And I think if you do survive that, you know, you can survive anything. You're so right. Yeah, that's mm. so true. And so I absolutely love that you guys took Nate out in the pram and took him out under the stars and stuff. We were offered all those things and we were just, we could not fathom the thought of moving from the hospital or, or leaving the space or, and I just love hearing your story that you did do that. I think it's incredibly brave and beautiful. Um, and, 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 and the color changing thing absolutely was mortifying for us as well. Yes, they warned us, but I just didn't, Oh, it was it's so heartbreaking to see your baby go through all those color changes like isn't it we, yeah like, we just fuck. yeah we just wanted to write like we'd be like oh we've got to go we've got to go like i can't be here and then we'd be like and then similar to you we were like just speaking positivity into Millie, like we love you you look so beautiful baby girl you're so brave and you're so strong because i just felt so bad saying like how bad it looked like it's like 
fucking yeah. awful and it's like you know, like you said before no one should have to watch your child go through that like no. fuck. and you shouldn't it's like oh it's crazy and so how and much just time that did... sound oh yeah i know that when you said that before i was the, like so millie, oh. millie did only take a couple of breaths once we took her tubes out like she just took a little bit but it was on my chest and dylan's little face was face oh. to face with her and it was just so precious oh. and perfect yeah that is perfect oh now now that i know that you're not on socials i'll send you some of the cute little videos we have <laughs> yeah do that yeah <laughs> Um, so how much time did you get with Nate once you took they took the, ch the tubes off? You seem to have got a little bit of time with him. Yeah, I would say, say, a day. A little bit Aww. over, say, 24 hours, I would say, yeah. So we did kind of get a full day in, which was, yeah, mm. I'm thankful for that. I'm, yeah, it could have been much worse, like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so but, then what happened? So um, you came back to the hospital once he had taken his final breath under the stars, which is so beautiful. Um, you came back so, to the hospital. So we did. We walked back up and it was it was so funny. It was just our luck, really. But do you know how they say there's a death and then there's always a new life? And as oh, we're walking fuck. him in and... We've covered Nate over, so we're just in the pram and we're walking him in and this proud dad, just the doors opened and he's just walking with his beautiful little girl with blood still on her and we were obviously the first people that he would have seen and he was just like, oh, it's a freshie and Pat and I were like, congratulations, mate, like so exciting and then we just like, he walked away and then we just cried because we were just like, shit, like, but I hope he didn't feel our sadness I hope because like he should have felt yeah. really happy like he just had a little baby girl but I was like to Pat mm. what the fuck are the odds of that like mm. I was like that's insane and so we ended up taking him in there and um we like because I when my gran passed away I touched my gran and she was so cold and I said to Pat I don't want that feeling on my fingers of Nate and he really encouraged me to, like, come on, let's just do his bath. So we did do his bath and it was nice that we could. He had a bath. It was nice and clean and same thing, got some keepsake stuff. And we actually, the nurses thought it was so, so funny because um, they thanked us. They were like, thank you for allowing us to share emotion because some families get really funny if we cry. And I was like, you guys are like his second mum. You cared for him more than I cared for him. So, like, mm. I want you to cry with us. I want you to be here with us. Like, yeah, we're, Absolutely. like, essentially a family. Like, yeah, mm. so um, we actually bathed him and I was like, because he had just such a cute little bum and, like, it was like <laughs> I got to see his doodle and I was like, he's a boy and I was like, this is crazy. So I said to them, can we get a ink print of his bum and she's uh -huh. like oh we've never done this before and I was like no no no, I want it so they put it on and then I've just like I've pushed it up so then you can actually <laughs> see his bum his little balls and then his knob <laughs> it's so cute and I Pat love actually that. got it tattooed on him <laughs> shut up I need to see you a photo did. of that <laughs> I'll have to send it to you it's so funny and he shows people and they're like I don't know what that is. And then we explain it and they're like, oh, my God, that's the best. <laughs> no, that's fucking genius. I love that so much. Oh, was, I, was yeah. so, I was super <laughs> proud. I'm, I was super proud of Millie's vagina. So when she would be in NICU, <laughs> Dylan would Dylan put a little um, uh, the nappy not over her but just covering her for modesty. And every oh. time, like, my sister would come in or, like, you know, a female in the family, I'd be like, check out a vagina. It's so perfect. <laughs> and I was like, so <laughs> proud of it. And then I we got that. sent, I know. And then we got sent her and my sister was like, of course she does. Like, you know, runs in the family. Like we were just so silly, <laughs> but it was like, anyway. And then when we got Millie's um, x-ray sent to us, so her x-rays were so fucking beautiful, but it was her whole body. So she had the two broken arms and two broken legs. And you could see that on the x-rays that got sent to us. But then you could just see her vagina with the little catheter in it. And I was like, look at her little vagina. Oh, oh, oh stop it. That's so cute. I love that. And so I <laughs> love it. Yeah. I know. Like, but it was just so weird to be proud of something like that. But it, you do. You're like, look at their little bits. Just look at everything so perfect. Yeah. I was like, he's 
got so he's got a big little doodle for a <laughs> week old. <laughs> I'm sure Pat was very proud. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. So we done all that and dressed him, and then, um, then we took him up to the butterfly room, and I walked him up and. We had a moment in there and then they said to us we had the option of, like, he could have slept with us in, like, I guess the cold cot or whatever. And I was like, look, this is the final, like, our good final goodbye. I don't want to come back to this room. Um, yeah. The butterfly room was beautiful and I love the way that they've set that up and the book and, like, beautiful. But I just didn't want to see him again. I just wanted to see him that time like that. So yeah. we ended up just yeah. leaving him and... We slept back in that room and then as soon as we opened our eyes, we're like, get the fuck out of this hospital. And it was just Mm -hmm. like, just crazy. And like, yeah, I just, so then we ended up going back to the the room we were staying at and I, we spoke to Georgie because she come over and she, like that was my social worker and she just talked about the next steps because we had the option of doing an autopsy. And as I said, I really wanted Nate to be an organ donor just to see if he could help anyone. Like, but yeah. unfortunately, Premier babies they don't no, rec- they don't do it yeah. or something. So I was like, yeah. that's okay. And they said, do you want to get an autopsy? And I was like, yes. And then they told us the three stages. And I said, I don't want him cut open. Like he was, I know he was an alert baby. He was healthy in here, mm. but it was just in his. Like, let's just see about that. So they ended up just going through the belly and that's, yeah, so we um he done that and then we stayed in Ram Week and I'm someone that was really against tattoos. I never wanted tattoos, but we ended up getting mm. Pat designed his, um because he's a Gemini, so we got, yeah, that was cute. my first ever tattoo. <laughs> and oh, then I got his little heart then? rate. Oh, you got his heart and, no, rate. I, that's cute. Yeah. Yeah, and it has little Nate in it and a love heart. So we we just spent, like, the week after Nate getting tattoos and, like, we went to Coogee <laughs> Beach and we just, like, we we're like, we don't want to go home. And I just wanted yeah. to stay there until he was released from his autopsy. And I was like, then we got the mm. phone call to say that he was released. And I was like to Pat, I want to follow them back to the funeral home. And he's like, I can't do that. Like, we let's just go. He mm. came in by himself, let him go home by himself. And I was like, okay, let's just... Yeah, so we went home yeah. and, yeah, it was like that was fucked coming home. And my sister, thank God, she, I take my hat off to her because she done majority of the funeral arrangements and so did Pat's sister. She done the slideshow. Like they took all that responsibility for us and all I had to do was just give consent to what they were doing. So that was, um, yeah. yeah, it was, yeah crazy to organize a funeral it's just yeah. I know and then when you're getting asked all these questions like did you want this or did you want this and I'm like I don't fucking know I was thinking of what cot sheets I was going to use not what fucking funeral decisions I need to make like you're just not ever <sighs> prepared to have to make because I remember saying something about the burial and then Dylan's like oh no we'll do a cremation and I was like okay like we were so it sounds good that you and Pat were similar that it's like I want to do this no I, I don't I think this and you just it, agree on whatever things are important to either of you or who's more passionate about some particular decision because you don't know what you're doing. You've just kind of got to go, okay, well, I thought this, but if you want that, then let's do that. That's and right. just work yeah, together. You're so right. Yeah. I'm thankful that we, yeah, that, yeah, working together really gets you through, doesn't it? Mm. So, yeah. And yeah, so did you do hard, a cremation yeah. or, a, or a burial? Yeah, cremation. So, yeah, mm. we, because I... I was a bit up in the air of seeing him, but then I said to Pat, I want to make sure he's in that box. I was like, I need to see him. Mm. So the day before the funeral, I'm so thankful we did too because it wasn't so confronting seeing that little coffin on the day. Mm. So we kind of got all of our tears out then and we gave him, because he had so much hair, so we gave him a brush to take with him. We gave him some Polaroids that Mm. we had and another little outfit and a blanket. We're like, there you go, you take that with you. And Mm, had our last little moments. And, yeah, remember the celebrant, he said to me, he goes, oh, being a baby, funerals are short and sweet. And I was like to Pat, this is not going to be short and sweet. I was like, this is our boy. And I was like, I'm going to be strong because he was so strong. Nate was so strong. So I was like, I'm going to get his strength and I'm going to talk at his funeral. So I actually Mm. spoke, I feel like, for like 10 minutes and it was start to finish of his whole story and 
it was really nice and it was just yeah i feel like the send-off was really beautiful um but it was shit <laughs> but it was yeah yeah you're so strong gosh i think it was would have done amazing to speak at oh, his you know hard, to be able to share that like, whole story yeah oh, i was like no this is not being short and sweet i was like he <clears> deserves <throat> to be spoken about and yeah i'm glad that i did and and it was good for people to actually they would come up to me and go thank you now we actually understand we didn't want to ask mm-hmm. you what had happened but now we know you answered so many questions and i was like well that's good i'm glad that i did answer a lot of questions but yeah it was weird trying to because i thought they would call me when he he was i don't know when that he was ready to be picked up and they didn't and I remember calling them saying hi I just wanted to know if Nate's like ready to be picked up and they're like oh baby Nate and I was like well yes that's yeah I was like I hate that you had to put baby in there and Mm. then they walked down here's his little urn they had to walk down and they like just holding it like this and I'm like Mm. oh my god I was like it's so crazy to think that he's just in here and it's like yeah oh it is cute did they organize that for you (laughs) <laughs> yeah so all we had to pay for was for the flowers and the celebrant and everything yeah. else was which I was so thankful for because you yeah you just had a baby and it's like you don't think of a funeral and the expenses to mm-hmm. that so I was very grateful for the support that we did get off people yeah um, yeah and so yeah. let's talk about that for a second because I think it's a really important part of the potty, which sometimes we don't always touch on, but what kind of things did people do to support you in this time and what did you find helpful? So oh, um, a lot of, like, my sister would come clean the house um, before we came home. Pat and I, we didn't want people around us. We are completely opposite to you guys. We were just like, we don't want people around. Like, yeah. bring it all, like, just slowly. Um, but... It was mainly with the funeral, so I just had a lot of people just, they would drop us off food for that week prior, but then as soon as that funeral hit, afterwards, no support in a sense. Like, people would check in, but that was about it. So it was mainly the lead up to the funeral. We just had people would give, say, money to pay for the flowers and pay for the celebrant and people paid for food at the funeral and that was really nice and... I know some people dropped off some food, which is really nice. And a lot of people asked, what can I do? But I was just like, nothing. Like, we didn't really want that support in a sense. We just wanted it to be us. And, yeah, yeah, so I kind of did lock a lot of people out, which, I don't know, yeah, declined a lot of support. (laughs) Yeah, I guess in that aspect, like, we were super open to it, but we still didn't know what we needed. So I was like, I don't know what we need. And I know people, I know that when I want to help people and they keep blocking it, it's like, oh, I just feel so helpless. So so I've just said to people on the podcast, you know, since then, like, if someone doesn't want the help, do what you feel is on your heart. Like, if you feel, I mean, if without disrespecting somebody's boundaries, if you don't want someone to drop in or whatever, I'm a big, I'm a, I'm a big advocate of not drop-ins. Like I just feel like that's super rude to turn up to someone's house. But, you know, if you want to buy like a super sweet present or, a, you know, or just deposit money into their bank account or drop food at the door or anything like that, I think they're – because a, a lost mum or dad doesn't know what they need but a meal's never going to so go bad. astray or a box of chocolates or a, a beautiful teddy bear with your baby's name on it or – you know, anything that just says I'm thinking of you, I think is just so beautiful. You're so right. I remember someone delivering and it was I was, it was funny because the day that this got delivered, I was like to Pat, I just want to get a little keepsake box. And then funny enough, we get a knock on the door and a lady that I worked with actually dropped off. It's such a beautiful box and it says Nate's keepsakes and it's like Aww. so cute. And I was like, what are the odds? So like just the little random gifts we would get. I was like, oh, my God, thank you for thinking of us. Yeah. Like it was, yeah, beautiful. Um, people are so thoughtful. But, yeah. Mm. And I think even five months on, just the other day, I got something in the post again from a girl who I worked with at Fitness First 10 years or so ago. And oh, like wow. it just stayed connected on social media ever since. And we always chat and stuff. And um, she sent me a bracelet that she saw in a shop that had mountains on it, but it looked like an M. Oh. And then it had like a really oh. nice Bible verse. Yeah. And I just like, she just said, I saw this and had to get it for you. And I just thought so nice like you know she didn't rush in and get anything in the beginning she waited till it was the perfect thing that she thought was you know right but 
it's so nice to know that people are still thinking of us, you know, five months down the You're track. You're so right. Because I find that, like, when it hits the 23rd to the 29th, that whole week I am, like, just replaying every moment in mm. my head of what the fuck was happening. And I get mm. really triggered and it's like I kind of don't answer my phone on the 23rd. I just don't want to speak to anyone. And the 29th, it's just, like, a lot. But I was so, mm. as I said earlier, fearful of that six months and, when I lived in Darwin, I was really close with a friend and she I got a knock on the door and she actually sent me a beautiful teddy and a candle and these beautiful native flowers. And she lives in like, oh, I don't even know, Coffs Harbour or something. But And in the car, she goes, I know today would be a really hard day. And I just messaged her and I said, thank you so much for acknowledging that. I was like, I find that people mm. don't talk about him or they don't know how to address me and it's like I love to talk mm. about me and I want to talk about him as much as I can and to have someone acknowledge especially that day it just it melts mm. my heart it's like thank you like I really appreciate yeah. that <laughs> yeah and that's really nice that I think hopefully like people are going to hear your story now and hopefully people that know you are going to listen as well. And so it's, it's a really nice thing for them to note down that the 23rd and the 29th of every month you're going to struggle or you're going to think back and, you know, hopefully over time those dates get somewhat lighter in their feelings, but the, the memories are still going to be there. Um, but to acknowledge that for you and to message you and to say his name and to send flowers or to even just just send a text acknowledging his name is just such a nice thing or acknowledging you and the way you're feeling that can go a long that's way so, yeah that's so true yeah yeah <clears throat> have you got somebody there no i just thought i could hear something but no, uh, no one's there <laughs> do you have nate's name on your shirt yeah so we done a um bears a hope walk and I was like, oh, um, let's, like, get shirts made. So I actually got, um, like, that sort of oh, name. Oh, honey, there he is. And then I don't know if you can see the back, but that's the oh, the back of it. Stand up. Nate McGuire. Oh. It's got another. Oh, that's oh. beautiful. Just all these photos. So, yeah, I, I thought I'll wear that today because I've only wore it once. I was like, I'm going to wear Nate's little shirt today. <laughs> I love that. So if anyone's listening on Spotify, you can actually go to YouTube and watch these these episodes so then you can actually see what we're doting about right now. But, yeah, I love that yeah. shirt. We actually had some shirts made uh, bought for us. So there's actually a girl on the Central Coast that I want to connect you with. Um, her name's Amy Taylor and she goes to Hope You See um church but her and her there. partner what stop it so no i used okay so i used to go there i got my client he loves church and i took him there and i used to go i used to pick up a shift every sunday to take him to church and i loved it and now i'm a bit cranky with god because like of i course. loved god growing up like mum mm -hmm. said when i was a baby my comfort toy was a bible and if anyone would take yeah. it off me i would cry and i was like so I really loved God in a way, but now I'm like, no, I'm really cranky with you, so I haven't gone back to church yet. <laughs> That's so valid. That's so valid. Um, we only just went back probably two weeks ago. Um, if you if you're feeling brave enough to go back on social media, you should jump on my on my Instagram and just have a look. I did a really big post the other day about our experience with God and how we're feeling and my revelation around that because I was very much the same, like, you know, in, in the hospital we were faithful and even after her death we were faithful and, the you know, everything. And then all of a sudden I was just like, what the fuck? Like, how has this happened, God? Like, yes, she's in heaven and, yes, she's fully healed now and, yes, this, but how the fuck did I have a baby with this awful rare disease? That lot? Like, you know, I just was... But one of the things I remembered was I said I, I was laying in bed and Dylan and I were fighting a lot and I was in a bad place and he was walking on eggshells and I was depressed and I was like, and I just laid in bed and I was like, God, help us. And then I went, oh, I do need him. You know, I do need God. And I'm not preaching this for this podcast. And if anyone doesn't feel, you know, aligned with that, that's fine. It's just for me, that was my experience and my feeling. And the, the strongest Dylan and I have ever been in all of our five years of, of being together was that week in hospital we were the best team and we were strong and we were faithful and we were praying and we were leaning on God and so for me I was like that's what we need right now 
I love that. I do love that. Yeah. yeah. And, it, and it is still hard. You still have your moments, but it was like we need that for our marriage right now and maybe we'll still never understand the full depths of why we've experienced this. But, um, you know, we were blessed to have her. We were blessed to have six days with her. I know she's in heaven. Um, and whilst God doesn't want these things to happen to us, but he's there to help, you know, protect us in that time. Or I don't, I don't know. I'm, st- I'm st- it's still a battle for me too. Don't you worry. <laughs> but, um, no, but I love that you're, you're still open to it. Cause like you kind of made me, when I listened to your podcast, you made me think, okay, maybe I do just need to go back to church and like, just have a feel and not just rule it out to be like, I am really cranky with you. I'm cranky with all my angels, but I was like, mm-hmm. no, I'll just, yeah, slowly. <laughs> but if I'm back. honest yeah, with you, I, like I love Hope You See and I miss that church because I go to Glow at Rabina right now and they've been phenomenal as a community, but they're a mega church. They're big. And Hope You See was such a beautiful smaller intimate church and so I feel like in this space I really feel like you would be loved and supported very much so like Darlene Tech does the most beautiful services on Mother's Day she really acknowledges loss she's amazing I was there on the last Mother's Day and I was like oh my god and then it was funny because I was pregnant and I, they're like, okay, well, Mother, stand up. We're going to give you a gift pack. And I didn't stand up. I was like, no. And I really should have stood up because I, like, you was, I was growing a baby. I was yeah. like, no. <laughs> But you're so right. They do. They do the most beautiful service. And when I take my client, they're just so beautiful with my client. And it's a beautiful little community for them that they can talk to people and they bless him all the time. And it's just, it melts my heart that they're just so beautiful. I wonder cool, if we've but... crossed paths because I remember when I used to go to Hope You See, so it was only a year and a half ago that we moved here and prior to that I was at Hope You See Charm Haven and I used to see people in there with their clients who would bring them in and I would sometimes sit near. Stop me. it. Well, probably because yeah. they've been gone for a few years, so that's so interesting, yeah. <laughs> I love that. But Crazy. So, so, there's, so Amy Taylor and Luke Taylor go to Hope You See and they lost their little bubba. A couple of years ago, I'm going to be interviewing her in the new year, um, but she runs sessions on the Central Coast, like a community connect for stillborn oh. and lost mums. So she would absolutely, you know, be a beautiful person for you to reach out to and connect with. Pat with Luke as well. Um, I know they did a Bears of Hope walk um, as well. So, yeah, you, you're probably very closely connected and just haven't quite crossed paths yet to to link up, but I would definitely love to link you up with her. Oh, I would love that too. Thank you. That'd be great. Yeah. <laughs> and because she, I, I reached out to her quite, so I reached out to her the day that I found out Millie was passing away and I was just like, I had never spoken to her, but we just, maybe I followed her on Instagram or something, or maybe we were friends on Facebook, but I just wrote, wrote to her. I just found out I'm not bringing my girl home today. How the fuck do I breathe? Like, how, like how do I get oh. through this day? And she was just phenomenal and just gave me all this advice, like, just touch her, feel her, smell her, hold her, take in every bit of her. And then she sent me some beautiful playlists to have this music playing. And yeah. And then she was like, and I'm going to be here for you for the rest of your journey, you know? And so we've just, yeah, we've, oh, and that was the whole point of this whole story was that she sent us these beautiful t-shirts. Oh, I don't know where they are now. Hold on. (laughs) So it says, I wear this for my daughter. Oh, my God. I love that. That is so so perfect. Isn't it beautiful? So she got one for me and one for Dylan. And so we haven't even worn them yet. I think we're, like, waiting for some. Maybe we'll wear them on Christmas Day or something. But I'm like, yeah, we haven't worn them yet. So, yeah. Oh, I love that. That's such a thoughtful gift. That's so beautiful. Isn't it nice? Yes. <laughs> so nice. <clears throat> oh, so you're six months down the track. It's just, um, it's so hard, isn't it? It's just wild. It is. It's just it's crazy so to think that's half a year. <laughs> are you spent, yeah. are you uh, seeking any, you or Pat, any uh, like professional help, psychologists, counsellors? What, what, what are you doing in that space? 
So it's funny. So at first I wasn't doing counselling, but then I thought I need to speak to someone. So I got on to um, Bears of Hope and they do a free counselling session with mums that have lost a baby. So, and that was good. And I just did it on the phone. I was like, I love that I don't have to go in there. And so I would just be on the phone with her and I've done two or three sessions, but how I'm actually healing is through your podcast. That's what's Mm. actually made me heal so much. I think listening and hearing people's stories, it's just like I can relate so much and I just don't feel crazy and it's like, but when I feel like I need that counselling session, I will book in and just talk. But I find that this is what, is actually how I'm healing better than talking to someone. And wow. Pat and I do talk. He's done a counselling session through Bears of Hope too and he loved it. Um, yeah. But, yeah, we, we talk within ourselves and I, yeah, just listen to your podcast and go for long walks and I'm like, oh, there we go, and that's, yeah, just how I'm healing. <laughs> I love that. I love that. And I'm definitely not a psychologist or a medical or doctor or anything, but I said it on my live video on Instagram this morning. So I've been going live every morning. I'm doing my IVF injections. Oh. And I said on there, like, I'm not I'm not a medical professional and nor are the people that I'm sharing these stories with, but I said it, we're just sharing our life experience. And, you know, I think that it's so educational as well. Like I just have learned so much from you in the fact that, you know, how beautiful it was that you were able to take Nate out of the hospital. And I, I said, we got given that option, but we didn't do it. And the way you've spoken about it so eloquently is so nice because what a beautiful experience you had you know and so thank you you know if somebody else is going through this down the tracks like I know my auntie listens to all of these and all of her kids are having babies and stuff so she'll ring them and she'll be like I learned this today on Rochelle's podcast but you know like I love that yeah like so people are gonna know (laughs) that if they ever meet someone that's gonna experience something like well you could take him out under the stars or under the you know the moon and I just yeah it's amazing Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's Look so at my cute. cat. Yeah. It is so cute. It's slap. Mm-hmm. <laughs> his, his name's oh. Miley, but I, we sometimes accidentally call him Millie, which is so cute. But I feel oh, like sometimes. Oh, that's really cute. I know. Sometimes he just comes and sits on my chest and gives me snuggles. He just loves her. Oh. Yeah. He's the best. Yeah. Well, my lovely, it has been so good to hear your story today and so good to connect and you definitely have done Nate proud I know at the beginning you said that your voice was going and it was like you weren't supposed to share his story but you have (laughs) with so much strength shared it and done him proud I'm sure and you're going to help other lost mums and dads that listen as well I feel so nice talking about it like I just I find that I don't get to talk about it and it's such like a touchy subject to people and I'm like I'm so excited because I was actually going to I was trying to get in contact with you kind of when you first brought it out and I was like, no, Mm. I'm not ready yet. And then I was like, I need to um, get in contact with her. And it was only because you've done an interview and you're like, we spoke through email and I was like, hang on, how do I find this? And then I stalked Spotify and I was like, oh, there we go. It's so easy. So I was like, yep, I'm doing it. And I just feel so healed even just talking about it. I just feel so much better. So thank you. You are so (laughs) welcome. No, that's so lovely. And I just, um, yeah, I feel blessed to be um, trusted in this space that you guys want to share your stories. And I just love that you feel better from doing so. And I just give you like encouragement to keep sharing. Like it's, yes, it might make people feel uncomfortable, but we weren't, we don't want to be uncomfortable either. And so I feel like I'm going more crazy when I keep it in my head. And so sometimes I just have to say something and you know um one of dylan's uncles like pulled a funny face the other day when i said i did this social media post to reopen the business and i put in there that i didn't bring my baby home I, like i've just finished mat leave and i didn't get to bring my baby home and his face was like oh like it was a bit of a and he's beautiful and divine and lovely and so supportive but i thought oh that just made him feel uncomfortable for a second but i thought well i'd rather reopen my business with everyone knowing my story rather than people coming in and oh so do you have kids and i just didn't want i didn't want that uncomfortableness so I've got photos of Millie but in the you, salon and Oh, I love that. But do mm. you find ever since you've had Millie that 
you get asked so much. Also, do you have any children? And it's like, I swear I never remembered people asking me this in po- until post-nate. And I was like, it's <clears throat> so I know now know to never ask anyone, oh, so do you have any children? Because it's like it's such a touchy subject. You just, yeah, don't know. Yeah. No. I feel like I did so always I- get asked only because of the – the industry that I work in, I'm a beauty therapist. It's just like, you know, conversation, but also because we tried to fall pregnant for two years, it was always a touchy subject for me anyway. So it was always like, oh, no, I'm not, but we're trying or we're about to do IVF or blah, blah, blah. So it's like I always feel and – and I'm almost 38. So for me it's like everyone just expects you to already have kids. <laughs> that's true, yeah. Oh, mm. well, that's exciting. Bring on next year for you guys. With your I IVF know. Journey. Absolutely. Wish you luck. <laughs> thank you darling Exciting. well you yeah. need to send me some photos of Nate because I can't wait to see them and I'm going to send you some videos and stuff off socials that you might have missed and yeah um, I encourage you to go back to Hope You See but I will, might even connect you with some some of my beautiful friends down there who would absolutely be some shining light and comfort for you oh that would be amazing thank you I appreciate it <laughs> no worries one other thought I had as well you said earlier that there was um a charity that you couldn't think of what it was called but they were really helpful for you if you find out what it is let me know and I'll put the links in the show notes and if we want to raise money for that in name in the name of Nate we can absolutely do that and organize that for you as well I I will do that perfect thank you all right darling no worries all right Jessie so nice chatting all right you too bye bye